Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be doing the DNF tag. Question number one, do you a DNF? Yes, I do. I don't know what else to add to this. <laughs> Question number two, if yes, does it count towards the book read for the month? No, not at all. I've seen some people answer this as like if I read over half of the book, then yes. But uh, I still say no, not for me. If I read like 80% of the book, it's just easier for me to just finish it. I will skim it, but I will finish it because I'm so close to the end. Um, and then I can give it a one star rating. But uh, otherwise, no, no, it doesn't count. I'm also someone who is very hesitant of DNFing so close to the end because I always hold out hope that something will happen and um, the ending will make everything so much better but most of the time that doesn't happen. Number three, is there a difference between DNF and putting it down for a bit? Yes, when I DNF I have no intention to ever giving it a chance um, and putting it down like I've I've put down I am Malala a few months ago. Oh my god, no, it's been a year. <laughs> I started this like a year ago and I think I got to like 50 pages and I was just really not in the right mind space to to read this, but I have every intention to coming back to it. I am still waiting for the right move though. Number 4, what popular book have you DNF'd? I DNF'd Crime and Punishment when I was in school. We were reading it for school and I could not continue reading it. There are some books that are written in a way that I start experiencing the same sort of mood, the same uh, state of mind as the main character. And that doesn't always mean that it's a good book, it's a good writing. I've read books that are considered trashy, where I had the same thing, and books that are very revered, where I felt that. So I don't think it has to do with, you know, a great writing. It happens rarely, I don't have it with every book that I read, uh, but it happened with the Twilight Saga, it happened with New Moon. Let me tell you, I was not in a good place when I was reading New Moon. I was depressed. <laughs> and Crime and Punishment, I just... I don't always make the connection between my mood and what I'm reading. I just remember not feeling good and just, it was, a, was I, I would distinctly remember being very confused as to what's happening and then, you know, I wasn't having fun with the book and it was so depressing and it was just, it's not a fun read. Um, and the minute I stopped, my mood lifted and it was gone. Like it never happened and I was like, oh my god, it wasn't a book. Um, so yeah, I have no intention to ever coming back to Crime and Punishment. I've since read another book by Dostoevsky. I read The Idiot and uh, I enjoyed it just fine and I didn't have that weird thing happen to me. And I still have other books that I want to read by Dostoevsky. I just don't want to read Crime and Punishment anymore. <laughs> when I meet people and they tell me that Crime and Punishment is their favorite book ever, I'm always a little scared of them. <laughs> And as to your more recent popular book, I tried listening to the audiobook of Small Fry and this is the memoir of the daughter of Steve Jobs and I was listening to it and I was just, I was just really not interested and it dawned on me like halfway through the book that why am I even reading this? I mean, I don't, I don't care about Steve Jobs. Number six, do you ever reattempt to read a DNF? Has it ever been successful for you? No, I've never done that, but I actually need your advice. <laughs> so I DNF'd a book like a year ago. Um, it's called The Mark and the Void by Paul Moray. This is a book by a uh, Irish author. It's supposed to be funny. Um, it says it's probably the funniest novel ever written about a financial crisis. I don't even remember where I stopped, but it was a little dry and there was a lot of that financial crisis and like nothing really was happening and I just, I didn't it. I didn't want to read anymore because I wasn't sure that it would be, that it would ever get better. Um, but if you've heard of this, 
if you read this, please tell me <laughs> if I should give it another chance because I keep it because it's so pretty. <laughs> I also, I found it while I was vacationing in Croatia. Um, I finished a book and I put it in the like the bookshelf and I picked up this one because it looked so nice and it's also by an Irish writer and I was looking for more international authors if you will um, so let me know if I should give this another chance number seven what do you do with books you DNF obviously I kept this one because it's so pretty but otherwise I unhaul them Number eight, do you choose more or less risky titles because of your stance on DNF? Do you hear this? Our neighbors are renovating. Wait, what was the question? No, I mean, it doesn't, what, I don't understand the questions. I very rarely um, invest in a physical book unless it's, um, it's something that I know I want to own or I've heard great reviews or it's a classic because even if I don't necessarily love it, I want to own it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really get the, I don't really get the question. So there you go. And number nine is to tag five booktube buddies. And I feel like everyone has done it. If you haven't do it, please. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to tag anyone tag yourself and let me know in the comments if you do it so i will check out your video i would love to see other people do this and uh i don't even remember if i was tagged maybe i was do whatever you want <laughs> if you want to do this video just do it anyway thank you so much for watching please let me know if you've heard or read this book what should i what should i do with it and uh, let me know what is the most popular book that you've dnf'd and uh, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one.